in our parish we have some landlords. Some do it for a living, some do it sort of as a hobby, some just do it for extra income. They rent out part of their duplex or an apartment building. Maybe you have friends or yourself who have been landlords to rental properties and it seems like every one of them at least has one horror story to tell about their tenant. The tenant that sneaks out in the middle of the night that does not pay his bill. The tenant who leaves with all the toilets, all the light bulbs, all the toilet paper, the tenant who grows marijuana up in their attic. In today's gospel, today's first reading, today's responsorial psalm is all about landlords and tenants. But at the beginning of the gospel it says, this is a parable. And so translate that the landlord in this case is not you or I, but it is God himself. And the tenants first are God's chosen people, the Hebrew people. And also we become tenants of a beautiful vineyard. The prophet Isaiah reminds us how the tenants, God's chosen people, turn their back destroyed the vineyard, ignored the landlord, ignored the Ten Commandments, and in the end had nothing to give back to the landlord but sour grapes, a vineyard that had grown wild through sin and selfishness and deceit. But for us in the 21st century, the vineyard is the United States of America, a land, as we sing, with spacious skies and amber waves of grain, from sea to sea, an abundant, beautiful land, a land where people from all over the world have come. To this day, they knock on the doors. Can we come in? When we think about it, who's knocking on the doors of Russia? Who knocks on the doors of China? Let us in. Do they sneak in the borders? We've never hear of such things. But only in America, where men, women, and family and children want to come to this great, beautiful, blessed land. And so we need to ask ourselves first, individually, each of us who sit in this church today, what kind of return, what kind of fruit do we return to the Lord for the blessings we have been blessed with? Probably the most important blessing in return and fruit to the Lord is simply to be thankful, to be grateful for all that we have. I haven't traveled much outside the United States, once to Italy, three times to Bosnia, Herzegovina to visit Medjugorje. One afternoon I went from El Paso into Juarez, Mexico. Juarez, Mexico. The poorest of the poor I've ever seen. We do not have poverty as I had seen in Juarez, Mexico. And so let us always return to the Lord at least a word of thanksgiving for the abundance, freedom, and choices we have. But the gospel ends with about the stone which the elders and the Pharisees had rejected, the stone which has become the cornerstone on which we are called to build our lives the cornerstone which is Jesus Christ. And so as the Lord calls us, what kind of return? Do we give him sour grapes or do we give him sweet, abundant grapes? But not only ourselves, 
But since we have the United States of America, we need to look at America as a whole. In what kind of return do we give to the Lord as a democratic country? As a country, do we build ourselves on Jesus Christ, the cornerstone? We can simply ask, Whereas we as a government place Jesus Christ, do we allow him to be taught and proclaimed in our public schools, in our public squares? And unfortunately, we know the sad answer that Jesus, the cornerstone, is silenced in our public squares, in our public schools. And sad to say, even more tragically, in the state of California, while Jesus Christ is eliminated, the great Allah of the Muslims is mandatory to be taught to all children from K-4 through college. On this Pro-Life Sunday, when we as Catholics are mindful of the words from the book of Genesis, the very first book in the Old Testament, go forth, multiply, and be fruitful. When we hear the commandment, thou shall not kill, and we need to ask ourselves, how as we, as the United States of America, honored the scripture in the command to give life, to be fruitful, to multiply. We know that here in the land of the free, the land of abundance, 47 years ago our Supreme Court said it is legal to kill any child in the womb, to silence their cries, to steal them from their breath. Just compare that to World War II, where we were taught before history was revised that over 60 million people throughout the world were killed in World War II. And six million Jews were eliminated in the gas camps of Germany. And compare that to just our United States, where 60 million babies have been killed. Six million Jews, 10 times more babies, have been eliminated because we, as the country, the land of abundance, the land of a free, has made it a law that we can freely choose to kill the fruit of the womb. I've never been to Germany, but people who visit the death camps say there is such a solemn silence of sorrow that it just penetrates one's spiritual being to be mindful of the terror and the horror that took place there. And now we have that very same thing freely done in this United States of America. One month from yesterday, the United States of America will have an election. And as we listen to all the talk, all the words, all the rhetoric, I suspect it's going to be the most important election in our entire history. And the question is, will we vote as an American, or will we vote as men and women who build their lives on the cornerstone, Jesus Christ? Many people are asking, how shall I vote in this land that is so equally divided? And let's be mindful that division is the fruit of the devil himself. And as Marxism so clearly said, let us divide and let us conquer. 
I found a beautiful article written by Bishop Don Hine, the Bishop of Madison, a bishop who was a priest here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Grew up just right over there in West Ellis, Wisconsin. But he wrote a beautiful article for those who have not yet voted. It's called, How to Vote According to Our Catholic Faith. You can go to internet and uh, Google it. But I just want to read two sentences from this two-page thoughtful article. He states, the United States bishops have declared abortion as the preeminent moral issue because no other fundamental moral ish evil has destroyed more human lives. There is no other evil extolled in either party's platform or candidate's policies that matches a party or candidate's promotion of the intrinsic evil of the direct and deliberate taking of so many human lives, a million each year in the United States alone. For the past three weeks, we have heard the good news of Jesus Christ, and the good news is this. For those who repent, there is God's mercy. On this fourth week, as we hear about the vineyard and the landlord, and what is it that we return to the Lord, it is very challenging because it reminds us that those who do not repent, those who do not build their lives on Jesus Christ, the cornerstone, there will be justice. The vineyard walls will be taken down and be trampled over and taken over by wild beasts to destroy the beauty that God has given those who live in the United States of America. Two things we can do is one, to vote. Again, do we vote as Americans or do we vote as men and women who build their lives on the cornerstone, Jesus Christ? Secondly, as I've been talking for the last 50 days, may we be men women, family of prayer. A parishioner recently said, you better tell your people, if they're praying, pray some more. If they're fasting, fast some more. If you haven't start praying, this is the time. Because the division and the evil that we see and hear so clearly in our country can only be overcome with the power and the love of Jesus Christ. And Jesus only acts when he is invited in. May we be men and women of prayer willing to build our lives on the stone which the elders have rejected. The cornerstone, Jesus the Christ.